a group of characters which is enclosed between the coach is what I will call it as a strength. Slash zero and zero are not same. How exactly it is not same job? Because the ASCII value of slash zero and the zero is different. Get care is a function which will help me to read the entire line. If I add two different strings, that process is what I will call it as a concatenation. Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the session number 5 on Array Strings and Functions. Hope you have seen my previous sessions on Array Strings and Functions, my dear students. In that, I have discussed in detail with respect to the arrays. Yes or no? In this session, I will be taking the pleasure to discuss the important concepts with respect to the strings is what you need to understand here. So fine. So without uh, wasting much of your time, let me get into the session. So before that, please don't forget to click on the bell button if you have not subscribed to the channel yet. And I'm Kaushik Case, a lecturer in the Department of Computer Science with the Ashram First Grade College. So fine. Let's check what is that I have for the day. Guys, I will be discussing what exactly strings is all about in the introduction and then followed by I will be declaring and initializing the strings. Yes, sir. I will show you how to declare and initialize the strings with the general syntax. Along with that, I will also discuss how do I read the string from the user and how do I print it on the screen. So this is what you will be learning or the take home topics from today's session. So fine, moving on to the introduction part. So as the definition says, arrays, please remember, don't forget this word. What exactly arrays is all about? Whenever I say array, so you have to visualize this image. If I say array wherever, okay, you have to visualize this image, okay? So that is very important. Let's check the definition. What is that I have? Array of characters is called as strings. Array of characters is what they call it as a string. So fine. Point number one, please remember. It is always terminated by null character. It is always terminated by null character. So what is the meaning of it? A group of characters is what they call it as an array of characters. Say for example, I have if I just write A or if I just write B or if I just write C. Can I call it as a string? No, I cannot call it as a string. Suppose if I write A, B, C, all right, can I call it as a string? Yes, you can call it as a string because it is a group of characters. It is a group of characters. That's what I will call it as a string. So what is string? A group of characters which is enclosed between the quotes is what I will call it as a string. Then how do I represent it? So with the help of the character array, with the help of character array. Point number one. Point number two, sir, what is this null character? Always say, for example, I have, a, I have to write my soul. How do I write my soul? Let me show you. How exactly it looks. Oh, what is the spelling of Mysore? We start from Mysore, M-Y-S-U-R-U. -U. So this is what we write, right? So what, what exactly the definition says? Always the string ends with the special character that is slash n. Slash n, is it? No, slash zero. That's what I will call it as a null character. So please understand, I'm just writing slash zero. What is this slash zero? So this slash zero, please make a note of it. This is very, very important. Let me highlight this. So this slash zero is what I will call it as a null character. What exactly this null character is all about? Always by default in all the strings. So you will find the null character. So that null character depicts or informs you that. So that is the end of the string. So sir, should I enter this slash zero? What is the meaning of slash zero? Slash zero in the sense null character. Should I enter it, sir? No, you don't have to enter anything. By default, it will be there. So why do I have this? To depict that that is the end of the string is what you need to understand, my dear students. And this is the basic knowledge that you should have with respect to the strings. Fine. What is the next thing that I have? So let's understand how do I declare a string? It's very simple. It's similar to declare an array. So how do we declare an array? So we use the data type. What is that we use? We use the data type and the variable name, right? We use the data type, variable name, and we use the square brackets. This is very, very important. Inside this, 
we used to write this size. This is how we used to write the or we used to declare an array. So let me show you one example. Data type in a sense, let me imagine int, int is my data type here. And then variable name is a, that's an array name. And then size of this array is 10. This is what we used to write. Please observe, I have done the same thing even here. So what is this? Character is what? Character is a data type. String name is what? String name is an array name. So I have used the square brackets. Inside that I have a size. So this is what I have to do to declare a string. That's what you need to observe here. One more important thing that you need to notice here, my dear students, I have taken my data type as char. Char in the sense what? It's a character. So if I create an array of type character, then I will be able to store the string because string is a group of characters. Sir, fine, you said you are going to create the array like this. You are going to create the array like this. This is what you are trying to say now. So, yes, name of the arrays, you have given string name. This is the name of the array that you have taken, right? Yes, sir, uh, I've taken this as a name of the array. So, fine, this is how the index will look like for me. Imagine I'm storing uh, A, okay? So, this is my string, I need to store this. A, B, C, okay? So, 9 slash 0. So, can I, can I store like this? A, B, C and 9 is it possible for me don't imagine or don't think that this is 10 this is slash 0 okay with my beautiful handwriting i have written like that so guys can i write this 9 my dear students i'm supposed to or i'm allowed to store only the character that's what you need to understand here so fine that's why i have specified my data type as character so fine one more thing you need to observe here i'll, I'll show you sir uh, can i leave one space and can i write like this so no you are not supposed to why because i'm using the concept of arrays arrays is a continuous allocation of memory that's what you need to understand so that's what you need to understand so when it comes to the concept of arrays so fine you understood the concept of strings strings is a collection of or a group of characters which is enclosed between the coach and i use the array concept to store the string so that that is what we have understood now so the syntax to declare the string is what so i have to use the data type called char in the array okay so that's what we have to do so fine we understood how to declare it so let's understand how do i initialize that so we have two methods. We have two methods to initialize the string. So the first one that I have is this one. All right. So how do we initialize this? So please observe what is that I'm trying to explain now. Char is a data type. What is that I have? Char is a data type. So fine. So name is a name of the array that I've created. Name is a name of the array that I've created. Suppose if you want, you can have instead of name, I can have it as A. So there is no issues on that. So fine. So you all know that name of the array. So fine. After that, I have a square bracket open and close. Then followed by I have the assignment operator that is, is equal to. Please observe. I'm using flare bracket after that. So what is that? What is that I'm using? I'm using the flare bracket. So after that, for each and every character, whatever you wanted to store inside the array inside this name array so each character is enclosed with a single quotes that's what you need to observe here so each character if i have written j so this j is enclosing with a single character is it it is it's a single character and i'm enclosing it with a single code that's what you need to observe here and each character is separated by comma that's what you need to observe here so fine Suppose if I have Kaushik, how do I write? How do I initialize it? Say, for example, K O U S H I K. All right. So each character will get enclosed with a single quotes. Right. Yes, I will do that. And then after that, each character is separated with a comma. That's what you need to observe. So fine. I have understood that. Then at the end, I have to mention I have slash zero. At the end, I have slash zero. So this depicts the end of the string that's what you need to understand this depicts the end of the string so slash zero in the sense that is the end of the string is what you need to understand so fine here each character is occupies one byte what is the size of each character one byte each character occupies one byte of size 
of memory last character is always a null character please understand last character is always a null character that is what uh, we have already discussed yes slash zero what is the meaning why now it's time for all of us to discuss and understand the slash zero what is the meaning of slash zero please understand slash zero and zero are not same slash zero and zero are not same how exactly it is not same job because the ascii value of slash zero and the zero is different so please check the ascii value of the slash zero is zero and ascii value of the zero is 48 so that's what you need to understand so that is very very important the ascii value of both the things are completely different so that's what you need to remember here and array elements of the characters array are also stored in a continuous memory allocation that we have already discussed yes and one more uh, type you can initialize this is the second type of initializing the string this is with the flower bracket okay so you can also in you can also initialize with the double quotes as i said in the definition in the beginning all right so whatever you wanted to so, so for example i want to store kaushik okay so let me just uh, show you so character array of uh, let me just write 10 is equal to kaushik i need to write like this so how do i store it so i just have to enclose it with the double quotes if i do that i will be able to do this okay i will be able to initialize it so that's what you need to observe here so you have two methods you pick up which one is easy for you so to initialize the strings that's what i would like to tell you at this part of time so fine so you understood how to declare so declaring in the sense this is the syntax so you also understood how to initialize you have two methods to initialize any strings so fine what next so it's very important that we need to understand how do i read the string from the user how do i read the string from the user you all know that we have discussed in a lot of practical programs like you know how to what is the function that i have to use to read any values yes it is nothing but so the scanf we used to use percentage d say for example we used to write like this right percentage d why do we use percentage d can you all tell me because percentage d represents that we are reading the integer value the only thing that you need to change instead of percentage d my dear students you just have to give percentage yes percentage yes in the sense it gives you or uh, it allows you to read the string values that's what you need to remember and you don't have to mention the ampersand you don't have to mention the ampersand so if you have the name of the array you just have to mention the name of the array here but that's what you need to do here so whatever i enter so for example i will enter kaushi so automatically that will be stored in this address array that's what you need to remember that's what you need to remember so what are the two things that you will remember so first of all you have to use percentage yes percentage yes in the sense it depicts that it allows you to enter the string values so fine so i have entered it so where do i store it so i have to store it in this address so usually we used to write ampersand address right in all my previous program you go by i can check so we used to write ampersand address but here i'm not using the ampersand because it is array that's what you need to remember and this is how i read the value this is how i read the value is what you need to understand so fine i understood the scanf how do i deal with the printf that's what you need to observe here please observe the next one that i have is get care why do i have this get care get care is one of the function so please understand sir how do you say that it is a function please observe this so if i if i come across with this parenthesis i've already told you you have to treat that as, that as a function right yes you have to treat that as a function why do i use get care what is the use of get care get care is a function which will help me to read the entire line which will help me to read the entire line and it stops reading it it stops reading it whenever it encounters the slash in whenever it encounters the slash in sir why it stops when it encounters the slash in sir because it indicates or it says that if it encounters the slash in that is the end of the line that's what you need to observe so until and unless it encounters the slash in it keeps on reading that's what you need to understand with the help of this get care function why do i use this get care function now 
to read the entire line. So where exactly it stops? When it encounters the slash n, it stops reading the line. So what is the function name? Get char is a function. So whatever I'm reading, so I will store it in the ch. That's what you need to understand at this point of time. So fine. Let me run out the points for all of you now. So what exactly that I have? The entire line of a text can be read and stored in an array. So it can be whatever you are reading. So it can be read and stored in an array. So the reading is terminated when the new line character is entered. As soon as it encounters the new line character. And so the null character is then inserted at the end of the string. That's what you need to observe. So the get char function takes the following form. So this is the syntax that you need to make a note of it. So what is that you understood? So guys, you will be able to read the entire line and it end, or it stops or it terminates whenever you find the new line character that is slash in our null character this is what you need to remember with respect to this. So fine, moving on to the next one that I have writing a string to the screen. It, it's nothing but printf. So guys, uh, there is no much, uh, you know, new thing in this. So same thing, whatever you did with the scanf. So what did you do in the scanf you use, you know, instead of percentage D, so you started using the percentage F in the same way. So here also percentage yes and comma, what is the variable name that you wanted to print? The same syntax here also to print anything with respect to the string. That's what you need to observe here. Fine. And then the next one that I have is using put care. All right. So please observe get care and put care. We have two different functions. Get care is totally different and opposite to the put care. So we use get char to read, but we use put char to print. That's what we need to understand here. Let's get into it. So C supports another character handling function, put char to output the value of the character's character variable. That's what you need to observe here. So get char was helping me to read the characters, but when it comes to put char, so it is helping me to display or to output the character variable. That's what you need to observe here. So the syntax remains the same. So guys, instead of get char, I'm just using the put char function. That's it. There is no difference in that. So please observe the same syntax I've used here. All right. So please observe. I'm just using the get char. All right. So you, you are just using the put char function. And then what is that I have to print so that you are passing the parameter. That's it. Very simple to remember. So this is what you need to remember with respect to this. All right, uh, and uh, the next one that we have is concatenation. So what exactly the concatenation is all about? I will be speaking about this in detail with an example in the next session, but in the coming session, but listen to me carefully, what exactly concatenation is all about? Say for example, I have uh, the string something like this. All right, so wonder. All right, so this is what I have. Let me just take another one. Uh, okay, uh, imagine this is my string, all right? Okay, so I have a plus. I will have one more uh, string, okay? So what will be the output of this? So I will get good morning, okay? So no space. Imagine I am getting good morning, all right? So this is what I will have. So this is one thing and this is one thing so please observe both the things what exactly is this so this is a separate string here and this is a separate separate string here if i add two different string that process is what i will call it as a concatenation that process is what i will call it as a concatenation so i will be speaking about this concatenation in detail in my coming session so guys till then please keep waiting for me for the next interesting session on this. All right. So take care. Bye bye. And keep waiting for the next interesting session. Don't forget to click on the like button and don't forget to share it with your friends. Thank you.